Friends, Stark here, and tonight is the 2nd of May, 2016. Tomorrow, I'm trading this 1994 Chevrolet WT1500, which I've owned on and off, back and forth for about three years, for a triaxle trailer. Now, I've always liked the simple front end with the glass headlights of the basic low-end model Chevrolets of this era. And I dislike the cluttered front end of the upmarket models, the high-end models, such as this 1994 Chevrolet Silverado. Same year, completely different front end. Too cluttered and has the fading plastic headlights. So I have a plan. I want to fit the smarter front end from the WT1500 to the Silverado. In fact, switch the grills and headlights over from one vehicle to the other. My trading partner, the man with the trailer, he will not care which front end he has. So let's see if we can get it done. Let's see if we can fit this cool front end to the nice truck. All right, let's begin with the fancy Silverado grill. And we have five screws to remove. One, two, three, four easy ones to see on top and then a fifth one just above the Chevrolet emblem right here in the middle of the grill and really easy to miss. Once we've removed those five screws then need to remove each of the lower lights which in turn are held in by four screws apiece. And that gives us access to these awkward little plastic tongues and need to lift up on the tongue and push forward on the grill at the same time. I'm not sure I can do this, hold the flashlight and work the camera. trade hands. Okay, lift up on the tongue and then pull the grill forward like so. Okay. Alright, step one. Well, the base model grill came out in much the same way, but there are two additional screws which secure these legs right and left. And one more thing, which I didn't notice on the other grill, there's a central plastic latching mechanism at the base of the grill. Now for some reason both grills have them but this did not hold me up. I guess it just wasn't latched on the fancy upmarket grill. On this one it was firmly latched and just pushed down real hard and uh, grill should pop out thereof. Good news. The steel back plate is exactly the same between the two trucks. 
Each of the back plates has all of the necessary mounting holes for either type of grill and associated headlights. So there's no reason that we can't switch the lights and grill between the two trucks. The glass sealed beam headlights are secured by a pair of plastic grommets. We'll push one home now. And a securing spring. Whereas the plastic headlights are attached to a plastic mounting plate which is in turn screwed to the steel back plate in one, two, three, and four locations. Over here on the base model we have a Franken truck in the making. Original glass headlamp on the right and I've already attached the plastic headlamp on the left. So we're underway here. This is the one that I must finish tonight because I want to trade it for the trailer tomorrow. The other truck we can wait on. So the only complication in this process will be in rewiring both of the truck wiring harnesses because the different styles of headlight have different plugins. This here is the glass sealed beam headlight. I like these because unlike the plastic they never fade. And just for anyone that doesn't know, for the sealed beam units the entire headlight is the bulb. So if it blows, you replace everything except the steel cover plate. These are dual filament bulbs and the brown wire is for the low beam, the blue for the high beam and the green for the negative. For the plastic headlight we have separate replaceable bulbs with two separate plug-ins and these are single filament bulbs so for each of them it doesn't really matter how you wire it just one wire for the positive and one for the negative let's see this is this is the right side so the outer bulb will be for the low beam and the inner bulb for the high beam. The plastic headlight will be going on to the base model truck so there's a little more wiring involved on this one because I'll have to branch the negative so that one branch goes to each of the two bulbs. Remember the base model truck had the seal beam lights so right now it only has one negative wire for the lights. The wiring on the Silverado will be easier. Don't need to branch the negative. It has two negatives already and I'll just use one of them for the seal beam lights. Now finally the lower lights or marker lights. Here's the style for the upmarket model grill and the style for the downmarket or base model grill. Fortunately, as luck would have it, these take exactly the same type of circular snap ring type connection so we don't need to do any rewiring on either truck for the lower lights. We'll just have to worry about the headlights themselves. 
I'm thinking that the upmarket grille suits the base model Chevrolet better than it did the Silverado Dually. What do you think? Yeah, looking good. All right, my friends, three weeks have passed since the start of this video. And now finally we have the base model grill freshly painted. From the factory, these came in a dark gray, but we thought that gloss black would suit this truck better. Now before I install the grill, I thought that I'd briefly explain the somewhat cluttered front end appearance of this truck. Why does it have so many radiators? Engine coolant radiator, mostly hidden by this black plastic shroud. Air conditioning condenser. Engine oil cooler, transmission oil cooler, and even a power steering oil cooler. So what do you think, my friends? Is it an improvement? Or did you prefer the original arrangement? A Chevrolet Silverado with a base model, front grille and headlights. Thank you so much for watching my friends. Take care. See you next time.